All right, people. Here it is, segment part three. Let me start reading from chapter four of John. I love this. It's a little confusing, but it's straightforward. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, but they are God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Let me go back to Acts. One more time. All kind of warnings in the Bible. If you want them. Let's go back to Acts one more time. Let's see what was said. Let's see what Paul said. Paul, Acts, Acts chapter 20, verse 29. For I notice that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of yourselves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. After them. Therefore, watch and remember that by a space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. What is saying being said here? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that has confessed of not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, wherefore you have heard that it should come. And even now already is set in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. Now watch. This is very confusing, but it's not. Right? He said, every spirit that confesses that not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Hereby you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Okay. Let me continue. Ye are of God. Little children have overcome them, because great is he that is in you than is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God hear not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that love is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. What is love in God's name? What is love in God's eyes? What is considered love if you love God? What is what it means to love God? What does that mean? What does it mean to love God? Oh, let's see. Can we figure this out? What it means to love God? What did he just say? Know that if you convert a brother from their sin. What he said. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide the motive of sin. Brethren, if you any, any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, love is way more complex than what people say. Love is not being a people pleaser and telling people, oh, you know what, that's okay. God loves you. Stay how you are. Is that love? Is that love? Or is love converting people from the error of their ways? Which one? Which one are you going to do? You're going to embrace the sin and say it's okay to live a life, certain lifestyle? Or are you going to tell them the truth? What are you going to do? It's up to you. What did he tell Jeremiah? Go to all I send you and speak whatever I command you to speak to them. Whatever. That's love. 
Let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that love of, love of is born of God and know of God. He that love of not, know of not God. For God is love. For this was manifested the love of God toward us because the Son, God sent His only begotten Son in the world that we might live through Him. Hearing His love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. But God, if, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. What is love? When Jesus caught the woman, the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, did he say continue to commit adultery? He said, woman, go your way and sin no more. He told her what her sin was. She already knew she was an adulterer. He said, stop, basically stop doing it. That's love. Do you understand, people? The Bible tells you examples of love. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God is dwelling in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we know, have known, and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because that he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Really bring about that. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. If you love someone, you tell them the truth. If you don't, that's, that's like fear. Perfect love casts out fear. If you love someone, you have no fear. You had no fear of telling them what's on your mind. That's not love. If you're afraid to correct someone. If you're afraid to tell somebody what's up. That's not love. That's fear. What are you afraid of? Perfect love cast out fear. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say I love God and hate of his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? If you love your brother, you'll correct him. I'm not adding to the word. By no means. Perfect love. It's correct. Rebuke. Love. Show compassion. All these things. All of it works through hand in hand. You know, if you are a child of God and you minister this word, if you love your brothers and your sisters, You'll tell them the truth. You wouldn't hide it from them. If you love your children, you tell them the truth. Right? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. You got to understand what love is, because that's what they're going to come to you. God is love. God is love. Oh, man, I bet y'all didn't know I was getting to this. God is love. God loves all of us. God is love. God doesn't hate anyone. He doesn't. He doesn't. I'm just being right. I agree with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die for your sins. And that same man that died for our sins told sinners to stop sinning. Lord, God is love. Stop using that get out of jail free card. People. People can construe love with people pleasing. Telling people what they want to hear is not love. By no means. Telling people what they want to hear is not love. Love is telling people what they need to hear. Who else ever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot love of him also that is begotten of him? By this we know that we love the children of God. Here it is. Here it is. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They're not grievous. For so it was born of God overcome the world. So a lot of these worldly lusts and the worldly affections are supposed to fade away if you love God. If not, you might be caught up in the world. This is the spirit of error. 
This is called the spirit of error. Make you think you can live for the word and live for God at the same time. Because you can live in sin and preach the word at the same time. How can you? We all sin to fall short of the glory of God. That is true. But you're blatantly disrespecting my father. By blatantly misleading the congregation. But you love God. What spirit are you operating in? I think it's the spirit of error. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For so whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The world. The world is one that endorses everything and say everything is okay. And God says everything is not okay. Everything is okay once you come to me. And confess your sins. I will forgive you your sins. And then I'm say, go your way and sin no more. And then you go out there and sin again and do the same thing. Uh, you, but keep coming back to me because uh, you're not just free from it. You're not just free to do what you want to please. You're still going to ask me for forgiveness. But just living in your sin and, and just keep doing it. And so this homosexual man or this rich man or whatever, if they don't see no error in their ways, how can they ask for forgiveness? Does it make any sense to you? How can you ask for forgiveness but you don't even know? Or you don't consider wrong? Keep my commandments. Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by the water and blood. And is in the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is. Can I say this? Truth. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it's the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is truth. You got the spirit of error. And you got the spirit of truth. Did you hear that? Spirit of error. Spirit of truth. Two different spirits. Spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. Spirit of error is another one. It causes people to error. In regards to what? Scripture. In regards to teaching. In regards to life. It causes error. That's why they call it the spirit of error. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the World, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his son. He that believe on the son of God have the witness in himself. He that believe not on God have made him a liar. Because he believed not on the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And his life is in his son. He didn't have the Son have life, and he didn't have not the Son of God have not life. You don't have life, what you have? Death. These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, what shall we ask? We know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. I just went on in regards to asking certain things. Go back to the second video. You'll see what I talked about in regards to asking. You have to ask according to his will. And then you got the spirit of truth. And then you got the spirit of error. The, er the spirit of error is going to leave you away in errors. The spirit of truth is going to lead you away in truth. And the truth will do what? Set you free. Error will keep you in bondage. Does it make sense to you? You understand? I'm just doing what the Spirit tells me. I didn't plan this. I tried to read something else today. They were like, no. Read this. Then I'm going to take you to exactly what scripture you need to read to prove a point. My point. Jesus Christ's point. God's point. Let me read that one more time. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So if we ask it for things that are not according to his will, do the math. 
But you know somebody else who might hear you? The spirit of error. That devil. He hears you. Because he wants you to error. So every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. We feel there's no respect to persons. You got to be careful out here. You got the spirit of truth. You got the spirit of error. The spirit of error is going to lead you to what? Error. The spirit of truth is going to lead you to truth. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we had a petition that we desired of him. The petition that we desired of him. If a man sees his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them. Here it is again. If any man sees a brother that sin a sin, not unto death, is that judgment? Or is that what you're supposed to do? And he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There's a sin unto death. And then they say that you shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God, sin of not. Hmm. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. The spirit of error touches you not. The wicked one touches you not. The spirit of truth is in you. Hmm. Spirit of error. Wow, people. And the thing is, many people are filled with the spirit of error. Acts gave you a pre-course. There's going to be people out there. Wolves. Filled with the spirit of error. Some of you are going to. Be speaking perverse things. Be with that spirit of error. <laughs> it's up to you, people. The wicked went touching him not. And we know that we are of God and the whole world of life and wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is coming, have given us an understanding. That we know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even his son is Jesus Christ. This is the true God. And eternal life. Because the Bible says no lie is of God. Right? So if it's a lie, it's not God. But this man just said that this word was lying. Test the spirits. Test the speaker. Test the preacher. Test the pastor. Test them. Put them to the test. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Amen. Little children, little children keep yourselves from idols. Let's go to Acts again. I got to go back there. He told you the same thing. Paul told you the same thing. Why? How did he tell you the same thing? How did Paul tell you to keep yourself from idols? He didn't say that. He didn't say keep yourself from idols. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. What he said. For I noticed that after many, after my departure, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, and not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. To draw away disciples after them. Idols. Because they're trying to draw people after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day. With tears. Read it. Understand it. You have the spirit of truth. You have the spirit of error. And there are some people that spread the words in error. And there are some people that spread the word in truth. Know the difference. And guess what? They both, most of them, are going to say they like Jesus. But how you know you love Jesus? Because you love Jesus and you love him in all honesty and all truth. And no lie is of God. If somebody's up there lying in regards to the scripture, there might be the spirit of error. And it's operating in our world today. Hope these words touch in a special way. I hope you have a blessed weekend.
God loves you. God is trying to open your eyes.